Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Another Fix Your Form where I am Silent Mike. I take your form, all of you, try to make it a little bit better, try to help you out with your lifting. We got some deadlifts today. My man's hitting a little bit of sumo. From this angle, bro, we don't have much to clean up, dude. It looks really, really clean. Um, depending on your build and depending if you want to experiment a little bit, I think you might be able to get a little bit wider stance. Our stance is going to be dependent on how long our arms are, how short our torso is, how mobile we are, how far we can kick those knees out, and then how long our thigh bones are. Um, it looks to me that you can get a little bit wider stance, reduce that range of motion, and still keep your knee over your midfoot and shoulder over the bar. That's kind of the main goal here. So we obviously want to flat back. We want to flex our lats, flex our stomach, all that. But in terms of stance width, we want our shoulders just over the bar or over our wrists. And we want our knees over our ankles. And I think you can get a little bit wider and still accomplish this. Um, I may be wrong, but it's something you might want to experiment with. Maybe, what do you got for right here? About 500. Maybe you want to experiment it with around 400, maybe 375 for some weeks. See how it feels. Uh, I think long term, though, you'll be able to get a little bit more upright. Be able to flex those quads a little bit better. And lift mo weight in the long term. If you guys want to get involved... Please subscribe, turn on notifications for vlogs and coaching and fitness. Be sure to email AskMIKKE with your own videos. We need 70% three by three landscape, high definition videos if you guys want to get chosen to be part of this series. More vlogs coming every Monday. Oh, I lied, not Monday. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Beware. Don't dare or be square. My man's got a nice little setup here. Taking his time, taking a look at the bar. Do you? Do you? We'll just wait with you, buddy. What do we got going on? Here we go. <clears throat> a little bit of conventional pulls, it looks like. I'm sipping on some coffee. I hope you are all enjoying your Tuesday afternoon. Okay. Looks really clean from right there. Uh, I've talked about it many times. I'm not a huge fan of kind of that touch-and-go type deadlift. I think regarding uh, hypertrophy, if you're trying to gain muscle or gain strength, I think we'll be better off with a dead stop, letting the bar totally settle on the ground. I think no matter what, if you're building, uh, again, muscle or strength, we want to make our things repeatable. We want to make uh, so then we know when we progressively overload. Say we do three sets of five at 225 this week. When we do three sets of five at three, 235 next week, we don't want the form to be worse, better, or the other ways. We always want it to be the same. And dead stop reps allow us to do that. As the weights get heavier with uh, touch and go, one, I think you're missing a big portion of the, the pull. Uh, the starting, you know, the power off the ground and positioning. But two, you can start to bounce that weight more and more and more as the weight gets heavy rather than actually building that strength or efficiency in the lift over time, right? So progressively overloading is important and is the key factor, but only, only if our form technique and how we do the reps remain the same for every exercise. And that goes for biceps, shoulders, and otherwise. If you're doing 60 pound dumbbells for sets of eight on a shoulder press uh, and the dumbbells just touching your shoulder on the bottom and fully extended at the top and then you go to 80 pounds and you're not doing the same range of motion you're not locking it out or maybe it's not going as deep then you actually haven't really progressively overloaded you're using heavier weight which is a progressive overload but you're not getting the same stimulus with more weight so we want to do the exact same range of motion the exact same uh form technique on all our lifts and then progressively overload with sets reps or pounds um oh, the other thing i would switch my man so uh the back's in a good position hips are in a good position i'd try moving that stance in just a bit so a little bit narrower stance uh, and then the dead stop but overall that pull looks really 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 good man. we've talked about the mirror you know this kind of rack you can't really mess with the mirror uh although i like people not to look at the mirror um <clears throat> we got some squats here overall i'd say it looks really really good actually um it looks like you might be able to get your back a little bit tighter the reason i say that is you're just wiggling those fingers around and that's a very common thing to do i used to do it all the time but if your back is tight enough you're really squeezing those shoulders you're squeezing the bar with your forearms you're trying to touch your elbows behind your back um, then you'll just almost not be able to move your hands or wrists until you get the bar off your back. Uh, that's kind of the point. If we're going to get everything as tight as we can, flex every muscle we can, that's going to allow us to obviously be tighter, but allow us to be stronger in the long run and safer in the long run. Um, and then, and then obviously we can relax once the bars in the, in the rack, but, uh, overall it looks really, really good right there. Uh, I try to experiment again, tighter back and also maybe a slightly wider stance if you could, but overall real, real solid. Dude, we got a squat and crew, dude. It looks like everybody knows how to squat here. Looking from this angle, I wish I could get a front angle. Um, we'll see what we got. But overall, it looks really, really good, man, man. Uh, nice, efficient walkout. 
Looks like you're breathing and bracing pretty good. Pace. I talk about pace, how fast you can go down, how fast you can go up in the squat. My man's hair looks really, really good. One thing, it's hard from this angle, so I may be wrong, but maybe a hair straighter toes. It looks like your uh, knees are over your midfoot but more over your big toe and that could cause some knee pain and uh, leaking some power in the long run if you can wiggle those toes just a hair more forward and keep that knee directly over your midfoot you might be a little bit stronger a little bit safer in the long run dude smashing conventional pulling on that second rep, it looks like the hips might be a hair low. Uh, you're having to get that barbell around your knees first. So if you want to put your hips a bit higher. The other thing is I see your toes kind of curling up. Uh, I think Ludacris talks about that in the song. I don't know. You guys can check it out. Quote below. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but what we want to do with both squat and deadlift and bench if you're in the USAPL. But we want to have our entire foot evenly pressed into the ground. If you think about pushing through your midfoot, toes dig into the ground, heels dig into the ground. The cue to push through your heels is kind of a beginner cue because people often balance on the balls of their toes and push their knees too far forward but once you already have that you know how to push in your hamstrings and keep a flat back then we want to get our foot fully in the ground and really twist out causing that torque or tension into our hips keeping our knees out and using our glutes more conventional pulls actually that look really really solid dude you guys are kind of uh, making my job a joke here because everyone pulls so well um yeah, it looks like you yank on it just a hair, my man. Uh, we want to get full tension out of your back. Second rep's really good. It's just that first one. You kind of nod your head, and I can tell that the bar gets more tension in your arms. Uh, Alan Thrall uses a cue called heavy hands, which, uh, and I just talk about getting your chest high or getting your weight back, the teeter-totter effect. But either way, we want a little bit of that weight. If you have 225 there, we want maybe 100 pounds in your hands. You're slowly hitting the gas, and then you're going to press the gas once we get there rather than going from 0 to 100. We want to go uh, kind of like 20 to 100, kind of a rolling start for those car racers out there if that makes sense i don't don't suggest anyone races cars but i've heard of something called a rolling start compared with dead stop a little bit of bench press we're getting the full power movements today um overall pretty solid <clears throat> one thing i'd like to talk about which is very very common for man probably 90 percent of the people is there's a there's a cue obviously to maybe arch your back or get your chest up get your sternum high in the air which my man has right here but that cue is only effective if your back is squeezed your shoulders right here are overly exposed uh, what we need to do is squeeze those shoulder blades together pushing our shoulders down down towards our hips and behind us and then a natural arch will kind of happen um, it, nothing's good or bad about the arch but if your shoulders aren't locked in you can see his shoulders are pushing that weight and that's why the elbows are getting a little wonky there because you don't have a tight back our shoulders are a really mobile joint and the only way to lock them in really is to or, or to stabilize them the only the only way to be strong is to push off of something stable and if our shoulders are made to reach above us uh, reach below us reach behind us we need to squeeze those shoulder blades and flex our lats flex our mid back hold those shoulders in place and then we can press and then your elbows won't be as wonky man not much to say about this one either uh i'd maybe experiment with dropping that chin just a bit it's making your hips move a little funky and it's not about a neutral spine your spine's going to blow up if you look up a little bit but sometimes your hips move a little weird um, but overall all our polars today are really really clean they're really just me nitpicking the switches on the deadlifts and the squats uh and everything except for that bench that bench we really have to get those shoulders tucked back and then that will cause your sternum to come up rather than just your sternum up and shoulders exposed i do appreciate you guys New videos, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Be sure to turn on notifications, subscribe. My name's Salam Mike, Mike Farr. New podcast dropping every Tuesday and Friday, and I am on Twitch. Link in the description, silent, M-I-K-K-E, and the number two on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one.